Hello students. Welcome back to your English session. Let's continue with the first chapter from your textbook Hornbill. The title of the chapter is The Portrait of a Lady. So in our last session, we had discussed the strong bond of friendship that the narrator shared with his grandmother. And also we studied about how the grandmother would take care of all the needs of her grandson. Now in the last paragraph on page number 4, we had read that the parents of the narrator who went to the city to settle in, they called the narrator and his grandmother to the city. And as they reached the city, the narrator's relationship with his grandmother took a turn. It's written over here that was a turning point in our friendship. So as they reached the city, the narrator's relationship with his grandmother took a turn. Now though they shared the same room in the city, but their bond grew apart. Now in the city, the narrator started going to an English medium school. So the grandmother could no longer accompany her grandson to his city school as she did in the village. And also, there were no stray dogs whom she could feed. Therefore, she took to feeding sparrows. Now, let us continue reading from uh, the last paragraph on page number 4. As the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. For some time, she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. When I came back, she would ask me th what the teacher had taught me. I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning. The law of gravity, Archimedes principle, the world being round, etc. This made her unhappy. She could not help me with my lessons. She did not believe in the things they taught at, they taught at the English school and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. One day, I announced that we were being given music lessons. She was very disturbed. To her, music had lewd associations. It was the monopoly of harlots and beggars and not meant for gentlefolk. She said nothing, but her silence meant disapproval. She rarely talked to me after that. So now here... The narrator says that with the passage of time as the years rolled by, the grandmother and the narrator saw less of each other. And also they didn't spend much time together as they did before. Now, for some time, the grandma continued to wake him up and she would get him ready for his school. And she would also ask him what he had learned in the school every day. Okay, Day by day she used to ask him. And the narrator would tell her about the western sciences, the law of gravity, the scientific terminology, the world being round and about some of the English words which he learnt in, in his school. And this made the grandmother unhappy. Why? Because she had no idea or no knowledge about those English words and English language I would say. And also she had no knowledge about the western science. Moreover, she could not help him with the lessons which were being taught at his school of all other subjects. Okay. Now, the grandmother did not approve of such an education where there was no teaching about God and religious scriptures. So, this also was a point which turned her off about the uh, English schools. And... Because there was no teaching of or about God and religious scriptures, this made her very sad. And when she came to know that the narrator was getting music, music lessons in his school, it disturbed her a lot. Because according to her, it's mentioned over here, according to her, to her muse, music had lewd associations. Lewd means indecent or obscene associations. So, music had lewd associations according to her and it was 
the monopoly of harlots and beggars and not meant for gentle folk so she thought that music was indecent learning music and it was an art which was meant for the beggars and harlots means prostitutes and not for those belonging to decent families okay therefore she considered it as lewd now she so she didn't like that he learned music at his school and it was also one of the reasons that she stopped talking to the narrator further let's read it then i went up to university i was given a room of my own the common link of friendship was snapped my grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation she rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone from sunrise to sunset she sat by her wheel spinning and reciting prayers only in the afternoon she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows while she sat in the veranda breaking the bread into little bits hundreds of little birds collected round her creating a veritable bedlam of chirpings some came and perched on her legs others on her shoulders some even sat on her head she smiled but never shooed them away it used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her now this is also very important paragraph as the narrator uh, the narrator tells the readers that as he went to the university he had a room of his own own so he was given a room uh, an individual room for himself now the common link of his friendship with his grandmother that they had when they shared the same room was changed now and thus his friendship with her ended because he was no more living in the same place okay now the narrator said that my grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation which means that the grandmother accepted a lonely life as she had accepted the separation from her grandson without any objection so she became more private and spent her whole day spinning her wheel okay and so from sunrise to sunset what she used to do she would sit and silently recite her prayers and during the afternoon she would she used to feed sparrows in the veranda it's written in the text that hundreds of little birds collected round her creating a veritable bedlam of chirping so this veritable bedlam of chirping refers to the noise or to the confusion and chaos which was caused by the chirpings of the sparrow the sound of the sparrow so some of these birds came and perched on her legs others on her shoulders some of uh, them even sat on her head and despite of all this she smiled but she never shooed them away and the narrator mentions that it used to be that that time that hour used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her okay let's read further when i decided to go abroad for further studies i was sure my grandmother would be upset i would be away for 5 years and at her age one could never tell but my grandmother could she was not even sentimental she came to leave me at the railway station but did not talk or show any emotion her lips moved in prayer her mind was lost in prayer her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary silently she kissed my forehead and when i left i cherished the moist imprints the imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between us okay so when the narrator decided to go abroad for further studies he thought that it would be the last time 
for he he believed that it would be the last time that he would see her her, uh, uh, her means the grandmother as he would be gone for five long years and at her age no one could predict how long she would be alive so the grandmother also accompanied the narrator to the station in order to bid him goodbye now the narrator had expected that his grandmother would be very emotional and sad as she would not be able to see her grandson leaving leaving for five long years but then the narrator observed that she was not sentimental at all moreover she didn't talk to anyone uh, it's written in the text her lips kept on moving in prayer and her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary so she silently kissed his forehead then and here pay attention to this the narrator thought that the kiss was the last physical contact with her and he also cherished this wet impression of the kiss that the grandmother had given him on his forehead okay let's read further but that was not so after 5 years i came back home and was met by her at the station she did not look a day older she still had no time for words and while she clasped me in her arms i could hear her reciting her prayers even on the first day of my arrival her happiest moments were with her sparrows whom she fed longer and with frivolous rebukes okay so later when the narrator came back after 5 years she came to meet him at the station okay to pick him up and she looked just the same way as she did 5 years ago not a day older she looked okay then what she does she hugged the narrator but she didn't utter a word okay she was still reciting her prayers while she hugged the narrator okay now the narrator also noticed that even on the first day of his arrival only sparrows would make her happy she would rebuke it is said it's written her happiest moments were with her sparrows whom she w- she fed longer and with frivolous rebukes so frivolous rebukes means um, she kept on scolding these sparrows in a very light hearted manner and also she kept on feeding them so the time which she spent with those sparrows used to be the best time of her day even after her dear dear grandson had returned back to his house after 5 years further in the evening a change came over her she did not pray she collected the women of the neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing for several hours she thumped the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum and sang and sang of the homecoming of warriors we had to persuade her to stop to avoid over straining that was the first time since i had known her that she did not pray the next morning she was taken ill it was a mild fever and the doctor told us that it would go but my grandmother thought differently she told us that her end was near she said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter of her life she had omitted to pray she was not going to waste any more time talking to us so now in the evening what happened a very strange change came over the grandmother and what was that the change was that she didn't follow her regular routine of praying that evening and what she did she collected a few women from the neighborhood got an old drum and started singing with them now the narrator tells 
uh, tells us that she thumbed the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum. So dilapidated means the drum was so old and worn out that its skin, the skin of the drum had also loosened up and the grandmother kept on thumping that drum for hours and hours and she also sang songs along with it. Now the narrator says that the whole family persuaded her persuaded her to stop as they were afraid that she might fall ill due to exhaustion and this was exactly what happened. What happened? The next morning the grandmother fell ill. Now she was suffering from a mild fever and the doctors told them that her fever would go away. But the grandmother thought very differently from what the uh, housemates thought. Now according to the grandmother, she would die soon and she, she believed that her end was very near. So she started chatting, uh, chanting prayers and she didn't want to waste her last hours in talking to anyone. Okay, it's written over here. She was not going to waste any more time talking to us. Should, so she had omitted to pray last uh, in the last day, on the last day. But then this day when she fell ill, she opted to pray and not to waste her time in talking to anyone. Let's read ahead. We protested, but she ignored our protests. She lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling her beads. Even, even before we could suspect, her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. A peaceful pallor spread on her face and we knew that she was dead. So the family protested and tried to stop her but she lay, um, uh, stop her from uh, praying. They wanted her to talk to them. But then she lay peacefully on her bed, chanting prayers and doing her beads of rosary. And suddenly what happened? Her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. Now the narrator could notice a calm, pale appearance spread on her face. And this way she passed away. Finally she was death. Let's read ahead. We lifted her off the bed and as is customary laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shroud. After a few hours of mourning we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral. In the evening we went to her room with a crude stretcher to take her to be cremated. The sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with a blaze of golden light. We stopped halfway in the courtyard, all over the veranda and in her room, right up to where she lay dead. And stiff wrapped in the red shroud, thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor. There was no chirping. We felt sorry for the birds. And my mother fetched some bread for them. She broke it into little crumbs, the way my grandmother used to, and threw it to them. The sparrows took no notice of the bread. When we carried my grandmother's corpse off, they flew away quietly. Next morning, the sweeper swept the bread crumbs into the dustbin. So finally, what has happened in this paragraph? The family lifted her from the bed, laid her on the ground and wrapped her with a red shroud, a red colored cloth. And then after a few hours of mourning, the grandmother's body was left alone and the narrator and his family went to make other arrangements for her funeral. Now, when in the evening they went in her room with a stretcher in order to take her body for the funeral ceremony, they saw that the sun was setting and uh, her room and her room and her veranda has had lit up with the golden light of the sun as the sun was setting. Now, the narrator tells us that thousands of sparrows sat silently near the grandmother's dead body. 
and they were scattered all over the veranda because she was the one who used to feed feed them okay so they were also present during the uh, that moment funeral day of the grandmother now unlike before that day the birds were not chirping at all and the narrator and his family felt very sorry for them very sad for the birds so the narrator's mother what she did does she fetched some bread for the birds but they didn't eat any of it they didn't even took notice of those bread crumbs and what happened next they flew away later as the family carried the dead body of the grandmother now at the end the narrator tells us that the sweeper removed the crumbs bread crumbs next morning so because of the death of the grandmother the birds too were very sad and they didn't wanted to eat bread they were they were too they too were mourning the death of the one who had fed them for so many days so this is it about the chapter go through the entire chapter very carefully and as i instructed before do mark the difficult words and find out their meanings also try to make efficient use of those words which you find are new to you people jot down your doubts to be discussed in the next online session also we'll be discussing the understanding the text questions and talking about the text questions in our next session thank you everyone